Hey everybody, John Brinkus here with the very first edition of Country Roads Plus, the official show for the one and only collective for West Virginia University, Country Roads Trust. Now remember, in 2021, the NCAA passed a rule that athletes can now benefit by monetizing their name, image, and likeness. Country Roads Trust is one of the very first collectives out of the gate. Make sure you contribute by going to join.countryroadstrust.com. All money that comes in benefits student athletes at West Virginia University directly. We have exclusive content right here on Country Roads Plus, and we have all kinds of opportunities for student athletes to benefit. So please visit join.countryroadstrust.com and sign up for Country Roads Plus today. Right now, we're going to bring in the amazing Amanda Maisie. Amanda, how are you doing? I'm good, John. What an introduction. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. You know, I was the first one to connect Maisie with amazing, and I will take full credit for it. <laughs> yeah, I have never heard that one before, ever. <laughs> That's right. Now, Amanda, you're in a very unique position. Not every university has someone like you who knows every sport, every player inside and out. Talk to us about how you got into this position. Really cool, actually. So I have been fortunate enough to cover West Virginia athletics on television, and it's just been such a dream come true here. The reason I was able to get in the door is because my husband is the head baseball coach for the Mountaineers, and I've had a TV background. So for me, this is really cool because I know all the coaches. I know the ins and outs of all of the programs. I know a lot of these players. So now to be on the NIL side of it is really cool for me because I get to help these players achieve their goal of profiting off the name, image, and likeness. One of the things that's so important in this NIL space is that the student athletes are directly benefiting. Having someone like you involved that the student athletes already trust really does help Country Roads Trust create incredible content. I absolutely agree. I know that collectives have been set up all around the country. And what's really neat about our collective is it was founded by Oliver Luck, who is a former AD here, and Ken Kendrick, who is an alumni. So they are both very tied in with West Virginia. And of course, me being tied in with the Mountaineers as well. So what's really cool about our collective is, you know, that we are all passionate about the Mountaineers. We're not just like some kind of outside collective coming in. We all have a vested interest in making sure that West Virginia athletes, are at the forefront of this NIL. Now, what's incredible to me about Country Roads Trust is that they're true trailblazers. I mean, it's it, you know one of the very first collectives out of the gate. Talk to me about really, truly blazing a trail. I mean, when all of this kind of came about with NIL, everybody knew that you better get in this game. Like some people might not agree with it, but this is the way of the world now. So you better get in and you better get in early. And Ken and Oliver had that vision early on to say, okay, let's get this collective going. So we kind of launched out of the gate and kind of had to work ourselves backwards because all the little pieces weren't in place, but it was important for them to show the country current athletes, future athletes, and of course, Mountaineer fans everywhere that we are in this game and we are in it to win it. Now, the big benefit to the student athletes with NIL is that, look, the top 10 athletes, 20 athletes, however many you know a school has, they're going to be just fine. They're going to figure out a way to make money and to be able to convert it, perhaps at the professional level. But now with NIL, every athlete can benefit. And you guys are actually set up for every single athlete to somehow benefit by monetizing their name, image, and likeness. Absolutely. It can be anything. It can be with a business, a corporation, through community service. There is something for everybody at West Virginia as far as the athletes to be able to profit. And any athlete can sign up no matter what sport. We welcome everybody to sign up from every single sport, and we are going to do our best to make sure that every athlete can benefit. Now, part of the benefit as uh, a fan and supporter of, supporter of West Virginia University is that by joining 
Country Roads Trust, you will have access to this program and lots of other great content on Country Roads Plus. Talk to us about the kind of content that we're going to be able to see as a member of Country Roads Trust. You know, I think one of the cool things about what we're able to do is we have access to the athletes that even the media don't have access to. I'm a part of the media and I have more access and more of a straight path to get to the athletes than I do as a member of the media. So I think what's really cool for us is we are able to show these athletes in a different light and kind of do things with them that a lot of the media aren't even able to do. So we have that exclusive content and, you know, the athletes just have a lot of fun with us. And I think that's what's really cool about us is what we can give fans is that instant access to student athletes that they can't get anywhere else. All right. So this is episode one of Country Roads Plus, and you have gone out in the field and shot some incredible segments. Tee up for us what the first segment is that we're about to see. Well, I'm so excited for this show. We have three phenomenal segments, but the first one is we sat down with five different players and there are a lot of new faces on this men's basketball team this year. And we sat down with five of them, one who is a familiar face to many Mountaineer fans and just kind of got their thoughts on this season. And then at the end, I was able to ask them some really fun questions that I think the fans are really going to enjoy. All right. Well, here we go. The very first segment on the very first episode of Country Roads Plus. Let's go ahead and roll these interviews. Jimmy Bell, welcome and thanks for sitting down with me. This is a slim and trim, yeah, Jimmy Bell. Bit. Let's talk about this. You <laughs> lost 75 pounds. Yeah. How in the world did you do that? Um, I changed my diet a lot. Um, you know, I was working out with Sean Brown. Um, he's a great strength and conditioning coach, so he, um, you know, he got me right in there uh, in the weight room. Um, but mainly it was just my diet, uh, drinking a lot of water, um, not not eating so late, so uh, that helped me a lot. I know that you were just a really tall. You were about three three eighty. Yeah, yeah that's the most I ever weighed um, in high school. I was three eighty. Your sophomore, and you were a football player, yeah. so I mean that makes sense. Yeah. When you decided to play basketball, how does that change your game when you lose that much weight? Um, you know, I can't just um, bully people all the time now. Uh, you know, everybody's just as strong as me in Division One. Everybody's just as tall as me, so now I got to use different moves, different kind of moves. But I'm still a pretty um, strong frame, so I can still use my strength a little bit. Yeah, you're you're still a pretty big guy. Yeah. Don't worry about that. Yeah. Your journey is St. Louis, a JUCO, and now WVU. Mm -hmm. What is it about WVU that you said, yeah, this is where I want to play? I mean, it felt like home. Um, you know, I talked to Coach Hugs. He came to see me while I was in JUCO. We had great conversations. Um, you know, I just like the style of play here, and I felt like it fit my game a lot. Yeah, what is it like to play? Um, for a coach like Huggins, he's very old school. Yeah. Like he is a hard work. He wants tough players. Mm -hmm. You know, he wants blue collar players. You know, you you played for some other coaches. What's it like to play for a for a coach like Huggins? Yeah, I mean, at Juco, I had um, Pat Smith, and uh, he's kind of just the same way as Coach Huggins. So I was kind of already had a feel for it. But Huggins, he just you can't you can't replicate that. It's, it's different. But you know, I like his style of play. I like how he pushes his guys, and that's the kind of coach you know I want in my life. Some of your teammates have said that. They really expect the Mountaineers to surprise some people this oh, yeah. year. You think that? Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, we had everything we need. We had rebounders, shot blockers, scorers. Um, we got everybody. We got um, depth. We got depth on the team. A lot of teams don't have that, so. Yeah, that's very true, very yeah. true. What does the NIL mean to you personally? Um, you know, it's different for a lot of players. You know, it's just now getting in effect. Um, but it means a lot. Um, you know, people get to use their image um, out here with different companies, different, you know, different places. So, I mean, it helps a lot of athletes out. It helps a lot of schools out. All right, Jimmy Bell, thank you so much. I yeah, appreciate it. Yep. All right, Keedry and Johnson joining me. Keedy, as you are mm -hmm. known. First of all, this is your third season here at West Virginia. You're kind of one of the old guys here, mm -hmm. but on the team um, in your third season now. What is it about this year's team that maybe is different than the past couple we've been on? I would say the versatility. You know, we got a couple guys that can do more than one thing, like Trey. He's a big, but he can also shoot, handle the ball, pass. So I say versatility and our work ethic. A lot of new guys on the team this year, nine mm -hmm. new faces. What's that like as a player to get to know these guys on the court, but also to get to know them off the court as just mm -hmm. like your brothers, your buddies that you're going to be hanging out with all season long? I mean, I, 
I look at myself as a nice person. So that was kind of something I was looking forward to, to meeting new people, you know, learning new personalities and stuff like that. Do you have a favorite Huggins story that you can tell? A favorite Huggins story? It was my first year. It's a men hug story, so okay. it was just me and him. We was playing Oklahoma State. I'll say this was my the game where people started to get to know me. He just came to me and asked me, well, he asked the bench who wanted to guard somebody. So I stood up, I was like, I'll guard. He put me in, you know, I guarded, I did what he wanted me to do. And after that moment, he started playing me more and more. The one thing that I think everybody knows about Huggins is he is loyal. Do you feel that way? Oh yeah, that's why I came back. Yeah. yeah. Very loyal. Yeah, talk about that, because in this day and age, people can leave. Mm -hmm. You can transfer, go someplace else. Mm -hmm. A third-year player, why did you come back? I'll start. When I was in junior college, I wasn't able to leave after my first year because I needed more grades. I needed So Coach Harrison would come like almost once or twice a week just bugging me, bugging me. And he actually laid out like basically a game plan for me to be eligible to leave after my second year with no problems and be eligible to play when I arrived. So they gave me that platform. I took care of those credits and they've been around ever since. When I needed them, they was there for me. So, you know, I felt like if I left, that would have been like one of the biggest downfalls, being the best defender on the team. So I wanted to help them out and come back again. You guys were picked second to last in the conference this year. Mm -hmm. Not such a bad thing, because when people really don't expect anything of mm -hmm. you, that's when you can pounce on people. Right. So what do you think about that uh, ninth place preseason poll? I don't even want to say too much about it. But they'll see, you know, we're not the ninth place team in this conference. It really just comes down who wanted the who wanted the most, you know, on the and it starts on the defensive end. And this league is big on defense, so if you're able to stop people and score the ball, you'll win. Keity, thank you so much. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Emmett Matthews, a familiar face to the WVU fans. But everybody's really disappointed about the hair. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It's all good. It's, it's all, good. all good. You look great. Thanks. All right. Well, welcome back. Let's just talk about that first game back at the Coliseum against Mount St. Mary's. What was that like for you personally to be able to run down that carpet again and just have the fans love you? Because you've always been a fan favorite. It was, it was kind of nerve-wracking at first. When I started the game, I didn't really know what to do. I was kind of scared. I was like, man, don't mess up. Don't airball. Don't do anything like that. And, you know, slowly as the game went on, I got a little more comfortable. But just being in front of the fans, the environment, hearing how loud I got. And when I scored, you know, hearing the fans get really loud, it just kind of made everything go away and it was just time to play. It's kind of an interesting story because, I mean, everybody knows it. I'm not going to rehash it. You were here, you left, and you came back. You know, a lot of times guys don't go back where they started. Once you leave, you leave. What was it like to actually come back to a place that you were very familiar with? It's, it's something new. You don't see a lot of people do it. I think they said one other guy's done it here. So, you know, just leaving and coming back, I just really wanted to get back to the environment I felt was best for me as a player and as a student. And, you know, just going through all that stuff with my parents, you know, talking to them back and forth, like, you know, where will I be comfortable at? Where will I get, you know, a degree in what I want? Where will I, you know, excel on the basketball floor and just in life and grow as a man? And I think that's here. And, you know, that's just what it came down to. And I love it here. I love hugs. I love the team. I think we got a good thing, good thing going. And, you know, hopefully we can take it to the top. This whole college landscape has changed with the NIL. What does that mean to you personally as a student athlete? It means the world. It means the world. Uh, obviously, you know, this is something that's been talked about for so many years. In my freshman year, I wrote a paper on it. So, you know, just looking at the whole Obama thing and all that going, how it went, and, you know, fast forward to now, you know, it's like a whole reverse 360. You know, you got guys that are doing stuff with cars. You got guys doing stuff. I saw a guy with the, he did the Zaxby's. You got all this crazy stuff, and you're able to make money and, you know, generate profit off of your name, and that's something that we've always wanted. So being able to do that, we're so grateful for. And, you know, I think we've done a really good job here. I think, you know, dealing with Country Roads Trust and everything, it's been a, it's been a phenomenal year so far. And, you know, we're really looking forward to seeing how all that goes just continuing through the year. Emmett Matthews, thank you. Thank you. Trey Mitchell, thank you for joining me. New Mountaineer from Texas. 
Are you allowed to do the horns down now, or are you not going to do that? Going to um, still respect the Longhorns? Yeah, I'm, I got a lot of friends over there, so I'll still show some respect for them. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about your decision to come here. You went UMass, Texas, now WVU. Why WVU right now? Um, for me, it was a big part of getting back closer to home. And it's not all the time that you get the opportunity to play for a coach like Hugs. So uh, I knew when I entered the transfer portal, I didn't really want to drop in level of play. So when Hugs and the guys came knocking, it was kind of just like a, an answered prayer, <laughs> if you think about it. Let's talk about this team. So many new faces, including yourself. What's that like to, to come on board and be a part of a team where most of the team is new? Hard, easy, like what's that like? Um, for me, it's pretty simple because since my sophomore year of high school, it seems like every one to two years, I'm on a completely new team new players so you have to redevelop those relationships and kind of figure people out see what they're about see what motivates them see what you can do on the court because people respond differently to every circumstance so coming here it was kind of a breath of fresh air because there's no there's no egos in the locker room there's no egos on the court and I think we're all here for the same goal. Yeah, Hugs told me, he said, for as many new faces as there are on this team, you guys have gotten really close in a really short amount of time. And he said that was a testament to the guy's character. And it seems like a lot of good, good guys on this team. Would you say that? Yeah, for sure. I mean, obviously everyone has their own backstories. And I think that it all happened for a reason. And we're all here now together. And I think like coming in from day one, I don't know if it was because we're all kind of new faces, but like we just kind of immediately like felt for one another, like heard of one another throughout the whole college basketball world. So we were excited. What is that NIL? What does that meant to you personally? Um, honestly, for me, it's just a, a great opportunity to kind of help my family out. I mean, from coming from my mom working two, three jobs, trying to raise kids on her own, and it was just kind of like, we were, she sacrificed so much for us growing up, for me to even be in AAU tournaments, be a part of different teams, get to me, get me where I need to be. So like now, just when the NI came out, it was kind of a way for me to give back to her before being a pro. All right, Trey, thank you so much. All right, thanks for having me. Eric Stevenson, thanks for joining me. First year at WVU, fourth school. Yeah. What's that like to bounce from school to school to school? It's a process for sure, um, especially the first time you do it, you know, because you're so new to the whole transfer portal. Um, but I mean, the third, fourth time, it's, you're just another day in the office, honestly. But, uh, you know, it's been great, um, especially coming here. It's been a really smooth transition. Um, but like I said, I've been through it so many times, it's, it's kind of, it's like repetition now. What do you like about WVU that's different from Wichita State, Washington, and South Carolina? The fans, um, our fan base is, is great. Um, you know, it's similar to Wichita, just on a bigger, you know, bigger um, scale. Um, Wichita had a great fan base, but obviously you got Kansas and Kansas State out there. Here it's just us. You know, I mean, Marshall's down the road, but you know, I mean, we're not worried about Marshall. Everybody loves the Mountaineers. Tough crowd. <laughs> Tough crowd. <Okay>. And uh, <laughs> you know, they welcomed me with op you know with open arms, and um, you know, I think I'm a hugs type of guy and a West Virginia type of guy, and so. You know, they've really embraced me and, and made this a really fun transition. Eric Stevenson, thank you. Who is the best dressed on the team? Probably Keedy. Me. Ooh, this is going. I would say Keedrian. He and said himself, just so I you know. I would say, I'd probably have to say Trey, even though, you know. Even though he said to say him? It would probably be Trey. <laughs> Trey Trey's got some, he's got some good fits, for okay. sure. I'm gonna go Keedy. Okay. He's. He voted for himself, yeah, and I, I said, I like beside Kitty yourself, style. so, okay. Like he's, he's a top answer so far. Wow, Amanda, that was awesome. Now, not, not everybody has an Amanda Maisie at their university who can really draw out the player's personalities like this. Listen, that's kind of always been my wheelhouse. I'm not a color analyst. I'm not a play-by-play. -play. I love to tell players stories. And I love asking kind of those off-the-wall questions that make them think and go, gosh, who, who is the best dressed? Who is the best or worst singer? Like, I think that kind of stuff is fun because that's, you're not going to read that like in a, a media guide. 
I love that kind of stuff. And I, I love bringing those kind of stories and questions to our fans. And really brands, uh, they're going to get behind these athletes with NIL deals. They're looking for student athletes who they want to represent their brand. And they want to know well, what kind of personality do they have? What do they really stand for? This is really part of the service that Country Roads Trust is doing is allowing people to have an inside look into the student athlete. Absolutely. I mean, NIL, any business, when you're watching a commercial, a pitch, you want somebody engaging. And that's definitely going to, you know, kind of trickle down to these college athletes. And what's really cool is they kind of get to be able to do this now. And maybe that's something they parlay into a career. Maybe these athletes are going to be me one day, you know, doing television or doing things like this. So, you know, it's good practice for them. And it's a great opportunity for businesses and corporations to be able to utilize these athletes. And look, look, the, the, the better and bigger personality you are, the better you're going to do in this NIL space. We all know that. All right. It's basketball season. And everybody knows that the ultimate game in basketball it may not be the uh, NCAA tournament final game. It's always a game of horse. Tee up this next segment, this next segment that we have. This is a Maisie family favorite in our driveway. So I thought, why not play a fun game of horse? But we named it Ears with these five guys, and we had a blast with it. And I gave them a shot that they all thought was going to be easy. Uh -uh, they couldn't do it. All right. I can't wait to watch this. Here we go. Let's roll E E R S ears. Oh. All right, what's what's the shot, Katie? Right here. Oh, I'm lefty. Yep. No, Man. Oh, nah, I can oh, that's all oh, I can do. with my dad and I. You have to lay down here. On the ground? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You, you lay down here and you have to oh, shoot it up. Come on. Lay, lay on your back. Oh. No. You, you just made fun of me and you air it. That? You, what see? What you. Is this? That's karma, Eric. What is this? That is karma. See? <laughs> Hold on, now bro. Now somebody got to make it, bro. You cannot make You made that before? I have. Yeah, that was like my go-to shot when I played horse with my dad. Look how I do with it, yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's good. All right. <laughs> oh. Oh. So are we at E-E-R? That's an R right there. That's an R to one E. Oh. 
Oh! So Jimmy and Eric come storming out of the gate. It got a lot closer than they wanted, but ultimately they were able to pull out the victory. They were, even with that shot that I gave them where Eric had to lay down on the ground and he thought it was going to be an easy shot. Nope. Took him a while there, but yeah, Jimmy and Eric, it was, it was, they all had a lot of fun with it. Um, and it was just pretty cool to see them. And they were like really excited to play this game. I mean, they're competitive even in a game of ears. So it was a good time. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people say that the most important shot uh, in basketball is like the eight foot jumper. Uh-uh, it's laying down on the ground and throwing it up. That's a very practical shot, right? It really is. That's the <laughs> shot I always like did against my dad when I grew up and my kids do it to me. So yeah, so we, oh. we had a lot of fun with it. and they had, they had a blast. So I appreciate them taking the time out to do that. Awesome. All right. Now coming up in our next segment, you were able to catch up with the one and only coach Huggins. Before we see your interview, tell us what makes him so special. First of all, that guy loves West Virginia more than anybody else I've ever met. He's from West Virginia. He played for West Virginia. He literally bleeds gold and blue. And that's why people just love him. He is now a Hall of Fame coach. Um, he was elected earlier this year. And he's just mesmerizing because when you listen to Coach Huggins, the way he coaches is not the way he is in person. He is very like loud and aggressive on the court and he's yelling and he's passionate. But when you talk to him, He's very light like this and very even keeled. And you're like, is this the same guy you see on the court? But he's just, he's, a lot of people think he's intimidating, but I find that he is just very thoughtful in what he, you know, what he tells reporters and what he says to people. But he's, he's very interesting in person and on the court, kind of complete opposite. Coach Bob Huggins joining me. Coach, thanks for your time. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Oh, good. All right, let's talk about the difference between last year's team and this year's team. Well, we're a lot more grown up. I think last year we, we relied on some freshmen. Uh, we, I mean, in all honesty, we probably didn't get what we thought we were going to get from some of our upperclassmen. And I think this year, you know, our freshmen are now sophomores. And, and so they're much more ready for the Big 12 and, and the physicality and uh, what goes on in the Big 12. And I like our guys that we brought in. They, they fit in well. We don't, have, we don't have any issues in terms of some guy doesn't think he got enough shots or uh, not liking this guy, I don't want to pass the ball to that guy, which goes on. Believe it or not, that does go on in college basketball at, at other places. What do you think is the attraction for kids to play for you? You're a, you're kind of an old school coach. You're a hard coach to play for, but I know that you're loyal. You expect a lot out of your players and you push them. Some kids these days don't respond to that, but the kids that do respond to that and they want to play for you, why do you think that is? Well, I think first of all, it's my effervescent personality. <laughs> Which we see right now. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Which just, I think everybody gets kind of excited about that. But I'm honest with them. 
you know I mean I think I think in today's world there's people people sell so many things that really aren't sellable and and then and, and obviously I'm on TV more than Homer Simpson is so you know I'm they they see it I mean they see it in living color I mean I am what I am how have you had to evolve as a coach over the years I don't think I have good answer we're still doing about this you know we're doing sort of the same things I mean rules have changed uh, rules have changed uh, the way you do things have changed, but I mean, so you have to adapt to that. Uh, it, it, the court's gotten longer. Uh, it's it's a it's a different game, you know. It's it's turned into a different game. They put all those lines down out there that didn't used to be there, and and now you have to adjust and adapt to those. There's there's certainly things that you have to adapt to, but the core of the game really hasn't changed. Did you ever think in your lifetime of coaching that you would ever see where kids can actually profit off their name, image, and likeness? No. No, but I mean, think about it. I mean, I, Bake and I, Maurice, laugh about it now. I mean, we stood in line to get a $10 check every month. We got $10 a month, and we'd stand in line to get it off from, from Joyce Buckle. Love Joyce, you know, but that's, that was it. We got ten bucks. We were supposed to live on ten bucks. Now we we did have, you know, if you call it, we had rooms in the in the towers, center block walls. You know, it's it's it was a different time, a different era. Um, I, I I don't think we could even imagine what goes on today. You know, back then, but it's different times. It's different times. There's different opportunities. I'm happy for them. You know, I'm I'm happy for him. I get more than $10 a month now. I don't get a whole lot more than that. Shane don't give me a whole lot more than that. But <laughs> That's a separate, but, separate but, segment, right? But I do get more than 10 <laughs> now, so I'm happy. What do you think about, you know, specifically your players being able to profit off name, image, and likeness? Um, just has have they gotten a good response? I mean, is it kind of cool to see that your guys can – can be able to do that and, and maybe you see them on a billboard out there or they're on a commercial and, and they're able to, you know, send some money home or maybe pay some extra bills that they couldn't pay before. Well, I, I'm, I'd be very happy if they could send some money home. I don't, honestly, I haven't really, I want them, I want, if, if you, if you want to uh, be called an adult, you ought to act like an adult. And, you know, so basically they're getting a paycheck like real people get a paycheck. The real people that actually go to work get a, get a real paycheck. So for them, and, and the only thing I've ever said to them about anything was take care of your, take care of your money. Take care of your money. Don't, don't come in here to me at the end of the month and say, hey coach, I, you know, I don't want to hear that. I'm telling you now, take care of your money. And because this is, gonna, this is a lifetime thing for you that you're, you're, you're going to have to earn a living for the rest of your life doing something. So you might as well learn how to handle money now. Um, don't, don't go out and blow money on things that you don't really need. And um, you're you know, really, you're privileged. And, and you know, the guy you're sitting in class with, make sure you understand he's not getting what you're getting. So, you know, appreciate it. Yeah. Appreciate it and, and, and do the right things. Coach Huggins, thanks for your time. We appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Amanda, I love the way you're able to just pull it all out of the players, out of Coach Huggins. I mean, you obviously have a very special relationship. In that interview, that's just a little preview of what people can expect by joining. Country Roads Trust, but tell us, how do you have such an amazing relationship with somebody who is on the court very intimidating? You know what? I think just 
my personality. I mean, I love to talk to people. I love to get stories out of people. And obviously, since I'm also a part of this athletic family, you know, I get to kind of be around these coaches and social atmospheres and, you know, away from the sport. So I am very unique and very blessed in that way to have relationships with these coaches that go beyond the TV aspect and the NIL aspect. Awesome. Well, that's going to do it for this first episode of Country Roads Plus. Again, please join Country Roads Trust by going to join.countryroadstrust.com. Amanda, any last words for this first episode? John, this has been amazing. I feel like we're like in this cool club with you now. So thanks for having us in. And I'm just really excited about what we're going to be able to provide our members in the future. This is great. Awesome. So everyone, you can catch this on countryroadstrust.com and also on brinks.tv. Lots of great exclusive programming coming your way if you join Country Roads Trust by going to join.countryroadstrust.com. Com. I'm John Brinkus. This is Amanda Maisie. And this is Country Roads Plus, Episode 1.